India is considered by many to be a land of elephants. and snakes. It might surprise them to know that there are millions of Indians who have not seen these three creations. Snakes have been linked with mankind from time immemorial. It was the snake in the grass which eventually led Eve to wear grass skirts, of course without any snakes in them. rites and worship were made to snakes. Gods were associated with snakes in almost every religion. is supposed to perform the dance of destruction on the top of Mount Kailash in Everest. Lord Vishnu, the god of maintenance, rests on the bed of snakes in the middle of the ocean. Barren couple worship snakes and pray for them. have produced haunting melodies and superb dances in India. Snakes have thus entwined themselves into human evolution. The modern depiction of human hailing is symbolized as the hand with the Hippocratic oath flanked by the winged serpents of Mercury's staff. Except for the animals that ruminate to cut chew, Reflux is considered as pathological entity. Breakdown of the cardioesophageal competency has defied the combined care of physicians, radiologists and surgeons. It is a strange coincidence that serpents have come to play an important role in the elucidation of this controversial subject. Balu. 32-year-old hero of this document is an expert with snakes. He can charm a cobra or swallow water snakes and frogs. He removes the fangs from the cobras but leaves their poison sacs intact. The fangs keep growing and are removed every month when the snake sheds its skin. He has been bitten by cobras and has got some immunity. He makes his cobras perform on him the kiss of death. The cobra raises its hood and brings its nose to touch his. A modified form of kiss may be given to his tongue. During the dance of the cobra, when it lashes out at Balu, it doesn't hurt him really. Only when it opens its mouth that it spells danger. Balu sometimes keeps the cobra's head in his mouth between clenched teeth. The cobra may then spit its venom into Balu's mouth. He spits it out, which causes a tingling in his mouth. 
The main feature of Balu's performance starts with a yoga stance when he pulls in his stomach muscles to produce a serious kephoid. Next, he drinks water which dilutes the gastric acid and provides a medium for the snakes and frogs which, though amphibian, prefer water. He can then swallow 10 to 15 snakes, each measuring 2 to 3 feet and an equal number of medium-sized frogs. When you fold your snake into three and take a little water, it is quite easy. He breaks the monotony of the serpentine diet with frogs with all the gusto of a Frenchman. <laughs> Then Balu contracts his abdominal muscles like an Egyptian belly dancer. This causes his esophagus to open for the quickest snake or frog. Once in the esophagus, Balu demonstrates an unusual control in bringing out the snake slowly and with dignity. He can also expel them in a projectile vomiter. Snakes and frogs are cleaned and restored to his glass tank for future performance. The snakes and frogs could be seen vaguely and it was not possible to study them properly or the way they were brought out. Thus the stage was set for the inevitable barium meal for all the snakes and frogs. Microfake meal, 100% weight by volume was given. A polythene tube and a syringe overcame any reluctance on the part of the snake. Some of the snakes had also learned to regurgitate barium. They should, having watched and participated in the program so often. the snakes are definitely in the stomach. They are quite active. Want to demonstrate how he can bring them out. Culminating item is to do the barium meal on Balu himself. But this was not an easy job. He had difficulty in getting the barium into his stomach and even more to get it out. It was however accomplished. Summary of the findings, briefly. Paulo has got a small hiatus hernia of negligible clinical importance. 
There is no esophagitis. His stomach is quite accommodative. The peristalsis are quite normal. He was asked to attempt a throw act. This shows that the height of the pressure was thrown on the pylorus and prepylorus. Pressure studies were done in his esophagus and stomach. These were normal when Balu is at rest. There is evidence of an upper esophageal sphincter in the post-cricoid region and a lower esophageal sphincter near the cardia. These sphincters seem to work synchronously, which is not surprising as vagus nerve supplies both. While the pressure was being recorded at the level of the lower sphincter, a swallow passing the upper esophageal sphincter produces a simultaneous contraction at the lower esophageal sphincter. Subsequently, after the bolus had traversed the esophagus and while passing through the lower esophageal sphincter, another contraction was noticed. Local anesthesia was applied to the superior esophageal sphincter and it caused abolition of the simultaneous contraction. After half an hour, as the anesthesia was wearing out, the synchronous action of the sphincters began to be re-established. Mere increase in the intra-abdominal pressure did not produce any change in the intraesophageal pressure as the lower esophageal sphincter when competent prevent reflux. A study was done on other normal subjects and some of them could produce reflux either continuous or intermittent. During continuous reflux, they cause the upper and the lower esophageal sphincters to relax and by increasing the intra-abdominal pressure, produce reflux. During this time, the pressure in the esophagus hardly rises. They could also demonstrate intermittent reflux, during which demonstration, they regurgitate the gastric contents into the esophagus and in a second stage, throw it out. They may liven up this demonstration by adding live fishes or snakes or frogs. intermittent reflux resembles vomiting. It may be associated with cough reflux. Balu showed how the pressure in the esophagus can reach very great height if the sphincters are not relaxed in time for the contents to be thrown out. This movie shows that anyone can learn to ruminate or produce and reduce sizable hiatus hernia at will. In fact, some subjects with hyperacidity manage to give themselves gastric lavage to maintain the gastric acid level 
low, thereby overcoming the need for antacid or heroic surgical correction. It is even questionable in view of these findings whether surgery has a place in reflux or hypothermia unless it is associated by complication. The contribution of Indian yogic exercises challenge the present concept about the factors maintaining the integrity of the esophagogastric junction. Organs under involuntary nervous system may be brought under voluntary control and we see that it is not impossible for a man who has conquered the earth, the skies and now the moon that he could also conquer the most difficult of them all, his own body when he sets his mind to do it.